The following is an encore presentation of new expressions. Yeah, I know we're late. Six minutes and 30 seconds. Well, actually, we're one minute and 38 seconds overdue. You know, I got a, I got a question. Like, what happened? Well, I was uh, like I in here know. at like five past nine this morning. <laughs> and like we start the program four minutes, five minutes maximum. True, past 10, true. And here it is. We're rolling into what? I, almost a seven minute mark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it is new expressions. And besides, Jesus is never late. He's always on time. Never late. So my dad used to say, I'm not late, I'm on time. So you're just early. Ah. So (laughs) there you go. New expressions here, 94.9, Rima Central Coast. My co-host, Craig Stevens, Evan Knox, here with you for another hour of whatever we do. Just party, kingdom, fun. I'm good with that. Uh, And coffee. You know, because, you know, we're walking with Jesus, so it's good. Um, You know, we spend an hour solid bragging on Jesus and his kingdom and uh, and sharing all things kingdom and exploring what the Holy Ghost is up to here in our region. And I got to tell you, there's been, we've been doing this. For years, like for years and have years, we? we have like f- I don't know, four or five years, maybe five years. I think we're coming up to. Are you sure? Seriously, bragging every week, five years solid on all that God is doing in the region, and never come up with nothing. <laughs> in other words, he's constantly on the move. He's constantly doing stuff. So you tell me, he's trying to tell me he's always doing a new thing. Come on. I read that Come somewhere. On. Come on. It Don't springs up before you. Do you not perceive it, Evan? Do you not perceive I, it? I, I perceive it. I perceive it. I see it. I want and, soup. And, and not joining us in the studio today for yes. <laughs> our new expressions program, but courtesy of Zoom because, yeah. you know, the world allows for that uh. these days. Uh, two kingdom giants in our region. Good, hey, good friend of the... What, 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 what do you want to do? do Come on. Yet. You're going to do something. This reminds me of something on the screen. Yeah. What's that? Is that... That show. Oh, driving. No, singing with comedians in cars. What is that? Uh, that's the what one. is that thing? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're talking yeah. to Christians in cars. Yeah. We Christians should start that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Discussion with Christians in cars. There you go. And karaoke and Christians in cars. So yeah, uh, <laughs> these guys are just itching to get, get something out. Uh, Nathaniel Oliveri, Normal Christian Life, good, good friend of mine and our program. Nathaniel, we've had you here a bunch of times before. It's great to see you on screen at least. Uh, and and your, your business partner um, with you in the car today. Um, Phil, welcome. Thank you. Hey, great to be here, guys. It's, even though we are all the way in our car, we're going to be in our studio, but... Uh, the internet is not so good, and so we decided we would uh, jump in the car and, and do a little interview with you. So the internet in your studio is not good, but inside the car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go with Swag that. Your figure, right? right. <laughs> you know what would have been better? Maybe, maybe if they'd have been behind each other. You know, maybe one car behind him, and we could have been swapping from car to car. Well, we could have done that. Yeah. We could have done that. But uh, downtown Narara, is that where you are today, mate? Yeah, we are. We we have to drive a little bit further away because there's not much reception at, at my house. So we're kind of just on a lovely street and uh, enjoying the view. Mate, many people will know because we've had these conversations before a number of times before. Um, mate, I, when I first started getting you into the studio, it was because you were on holidays down on the coast. Mm. And I'm going, yeah. man, we need you in the studio. We need to have a conversation because of yeah. what it is that you carry, what the Lord's doing in your life. And uh, and I'm keen to champion that till you know my dying days because there's a, a, re- a phenomenal grace as an evangelist on you and uh, and been keen to honor that ever since. And but but since those early days, you now you're now coasty. And um, I think we last spoke and you had relocated your studio, uh, the Normal Christian Life Studios and, and you know, yeah. head office, if you like, down here on the Central Coast. So that's all kind of new. And, and what's unfolded since then is, is, is Phil's come on team. Um, so, yes. but, but, you know, we haven't got a translator in the studio, so you might have to help us to understand. But uh, how did Phil come to <laughs> plug in with a normal Christian life? What's his role? What's he doing? Phil, maybe get a couple yeah. of minutes on that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, been, it's been an incredible, <laughs> incredible few years. And I'll, I'll pass on to Phil in just a second. I'll introduce him first. But um, it's been an, an incredible uh, couple of years. As, as Craig said, we were uh, living in Brisbane. Been for seven years, God was just doing incredible things. We were seeing um, why we were out and about filming. Uh, we were seeing Muslims get saved on the streets of Brisbane and baptized and just the most astonishing miracles. And, and two years ago, God called us back 
to uh to God's country uh, in the Central Amen. Coast, and so we really really felt called to be here, and felt that God was was really doing some significant things right here in the Central Coast. Actually, my wife had a dream and vision uh, about a movement taking place, uh, some really exciting things. And uh, once we moved and built the Normal Christian Life Studio here. It, we've never experienced uh, God's grace and we've experienced his grace on the normal Christian life, but it's like it's gone exponential. And in the last few years, we've put right when the bushfires happened, we put a video out responding to the bushfires. Didn't know COVID-19 was going to happen yet. Uh, basically, we were sharing the gospel with people and it just went viral. Four million views on Facebook. Then a couple of months later, uh, COVID breaks out and we put this video online uh with a part with a guy basically who almost died of COVID-19 when God sent a cleaner and this cleaner basically God uses to pray for him witness to him and and basically the guy gets healed and we put the video out online to our absolute shock Phil this was the first official film that Phil helped me with from New Zealand and there's an amazing backstory Phil will fill you in in a second <laughs> sorry about the pun and uh <laughs> but um Basically, we, we put this video out, we worked on it together, and we could not believe it because this little video from the Central Coast had 43.5 million views across the globe on Facebook. And here's where I got really excited because it's not just about numbers. There was 1 million people more actually who shared this video boldly and publicly on their facebook pages for the world to see and it's yeah. it's the gospel unbridled gospel and we just knew god had a grace on this and and shortly after we did a video with 50 countries singing amazing grace again right from here in the central coast and it just blew up around the world and uh at that point the projects we we're working on were having so much impact and phil and his family really felt called to uh to officially join the normal christian life full-time and in a second, we'll update you on what's been happening since Phil came. But Phil, do you want to give a quick update? Yeah. So the first time I heard about the normal Christian life, I was a new Christian and I wasn't sure about the, the gifts of healing or, or what that looked like for today. So um, I actually went to YouTube, as I think most young people do, and I just looked up, does Jesus heal today? And normal Christian life was some of the first videos I had found. And so um, I was quite inspired by what I saw in the videos. And so I went out in the streets and tried to kind of practice what I saw. And it was around that time that actually, um, about six years ago, um, I actually, in that phase of my life, I had received a word from a random person in McDonald's that prophesied over me and said that I'd be working one day with a person named Nathaniel. And... You know, <laughs> From the That's normal nuts. life, the only person I knew of, and we, um, we didn't know each other in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Um, but I had a heart for film, and I was also an evangelist at heart. So um, I sort of made my life course decisions based on that word. And uh, Nathaniel put out a call one day, uh, asking for help for uh, if there's anyone in the world that could edit. Help! Um, I said, <laughs> well, uh, I put my hand up straight away, faster than the speed of lightning. And um, we connected that way, yep. and uh, I started um, editing for him just and that remotely. And tra the translation for that is editing? Yeah. So yeah. just say yeah. e editing? The, the, the ed editing? <laughs> well, yeah. When you said translate, I thought you meant for me. No, no. no. <laughs> I feel a lot Kiwi better friend. now. Our Kiwi friend. Yeah. I feel so much better about myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's there you go. Yeah, so I've been helping Nathaniel from New Zealand, editing from my home. And we just saw God's hand on it and saw just things that we had never seen before. It just had an impact greater than anything we had done previously and anything mm. that Daniel had done um, up until that point. Yes. And so we just felt a strong calling that God was calling us to move to Australia, me and my family. I have three kids. And so, you know, everything, this world is uncertain and there's lockdowns all day, every day. So um, we just made a call. We're just going to move over no matter what happens. And because um, you can't really plan the future as good as you used to. So we bought some tickets. Everything opened up. We got here about six months ago and everything closed up again. And <laughs> it's a miracle that we got here. So. They got here just in time for another lockdown. <laughs> we, we, we've locked you down, <laughs> Phil. You can't go anywhere, mate. Yeah. So that's, that's the origin story of how we got together. And now yep. we're just working on exciting projects and I live super close, which is another miracle story. And yeah, um, 
yeah, God's been really good throughout this whole process. It's been a huge blessing. Um, and in fact, what we've been working on in the last uh, six months is huge. And I believe last time I was on the radio with you both, I was talking about a feature film that we're still working on, a documentary, amazing story. But exciting news is there's actually a a, uh, a smaller scale yet huge production. It's, it's in fact our biggest production we've worked on so far. And um, I thought I might play it online if you want, just a, a little bit of a, a, an update. It's a two-minute audio update, but it's actually a video. And do we, do we still have time for me to play that now? Is Would that work okay? Great. Oh, yeah. Because... This is a this is a premiere. So everyone who's listening online, uh, sorry, or, or on the radio right now, uh, you guys are getting a, an official premiere before it goes up on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, first in the world, right here on the Central Coast. <laughs> so I'm going to play a little bit of an update, and this is basically uh, there'll be a couple of parts that um, won't make as much sense because it is a video, but you'll be able to fill in the blanks and hear this little update video. So let me share my screen. And I'm going to try and hit play on that and maybe give me a little thumbs up if the audio is coming through cleanly for you. An update from the normal Christian life. We're working on our biggest project yet. And it wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for our newest member, Phil. Nathaniel Oliveri is a strange specimen. Focusing on work. Nothing distracts him. My family and I have moved all the way to Australia from New Zealand to join the normal Christian life. And the craziest part is that we actually found a home that's only 750 meters away from Nathaniel's house. Which was awesome because since Phil now lives down the road, we've been able to work in the NCL office every day for one of Australia's hardest lockdowns. The New South Wales government has announced tougher COVID restrictions across... And we've been working on an extraordinary story. It's our biggest production yet, and it's a story about a girl who wrote a blog weeks before she lost her life in a car accident. In the midst of the grief, her family made a startling discovery. Her blog was actually a message from God. And what it said has impacted people all over the world and brought countless people to faith. This story is so touching and so inspiring that we've been working on it for months. This has been a huge process. We've been interviewing the family, working on scripts and edits, and finally conducting a film shoot where we've been able to dramatize some of the key events. And it's incredible that we've been able to get the project this far. So we want to say a massive thank you to all those who have helped make this possible. We're going to be sending out more videos about this production in the weeks to come. If you've been inspired by our content and you want to actually help us finish this episode from now to Christmas, any donations that are given to The Normal Christian Life will go towards us completing this project. It's got a profound message. We believe many people are going to be impacted and come to Christ through this episode. We'll be putting out more updates over the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys later. God bless. There it is. First, uh, first online. That's a, uh, that's a premiere. It's going to be up on Facebook and YouTube later today. Uh, and I tell you what, we had the most incredible, miraculous experience when we filmed this particular episode. Uh, we, right here in the Central Coast, had a whole week where we were able to, as I said in that video, dramatize some of the key events, which what we mean by that is when, you, when you're seeing these people and they're being interviewed about this profound story, you're literally able to cut to high quality performances where there's, you know, sets and uh, lighting and, and it's really cinematic and it basically engages the story at, at a whole nother level. So we, we were able to do a whole week film shoot right here in the Central Coast and we had the most incredible community come around us uh, and, and help volunteer. We had um, people come and act and set people basically help us build whole sets. And, you know, in COVID-19, it's hard to get into a hospital. So we had people help us build our own hospital set out of uh, Narara Valley Baptist Church. So shout out to those guys. Thank you so much for your help. But we literally turned it into a convincing hospital set with like, uh, you know, it just looks like a hospital. I wish you guys could see the, the video footage. And um, we had, uh, you know, makeup artists come and help. Most incredible thing is the amount of people who came on set and either had their faith strengthened or some people that weren't of faith and actually came to faith on this film set because the story and the nature of how how it was uh conducted touched them so profoundly and that's right here 
in the Central Coast, in Gosford and the surrounding areas where we've been able to conduct what I think is going to be one of the most uh, profound uh, films you know, to, to go to air and, and we were able to shoot that right here. So thanks so much to the community around. So many people jumped in, so many people helped us and we're about to uh, release that as, as soon as we can, um, budget permitting in the next few months. So we're just going to be working on that and you, we, we'll get it done whenever we can. But uh, it's huge. So many testimonies from behind the scenes of that. So where can you view the trailer? So that will be available uh, if you just look at The Normal Christian Life on Facebook or even on YouTube, we'll put a, a little link to, to sh you know, where that will be available. Best place would actually be to just go thenormalchristianlife.org and right there you can sign up to the email and we'll be giving you updates. If you're in the Central Coast, you don't want to miss out on being on this emailing list, thenormalchristianlife.org because... Really, it's it's incredible what is coming out of this this you know beautiful place and and the the fact that God is is using this content globally. So Mate, yeah, yeah love you're, you to you're absolutely right. Big big that. fans of normal Christian life. Big fans of what you're doing, what you carry. You know, telling the story in film, capturing images, capturing the the tell of the gospel. It, it's spectacular. You're right. It is a great grace to the Central Coast. The Central Coast is behind it, and we'll be championing on this stuff in in the days to come. I mean, I can't wait to unpack some more uh, with you guys and 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 capture some more of the stories of what God's doing through. Uh, youtube film and all that you're doing in facebook and and the social media space as well it's awesome um but joy, joy. <laughs> come on <laughs> no, we this is our coast. story isn't it joy <laughs> exactly is great Dude. song it was a great song during covid great song now yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. can't cannot cannot knock it back yeah, so our yeah. guest today nathaniel Oliveri and phil phil yes, Oliveri I mean, as well i mean no? <laughs> Dur during the clip, we, 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 while the clip was playing, you know, Craig, Craig and I had to re-listen back to the first 10 minutes because we missed some things that Phil was saying. But then we found out he was from New Zealand and it clicked. Yeah. We knew how yeah, to decipher yeah, yeah, those. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. We can yes. filter that we, thing. We knew right how to break now. that code. <laughs> listeners, listeners will, will know. Uh, we've, we've highlighted the normal Christian life, which is, I agree in Jesus' name that this is a fulfillment of prophecy that the normal Christian life is exactly what Phil, as a young guy in New Zealand, encounters. The healing work, the supernatural move of God, the saving work of God, mm. the, the work of the evangelist, the work of prophecy, the work of the Spirit of God in in our local towns, in our, uh, our, our supermarkets, shopping centers, in our workplaces, in our schools. This is, in fact, the normal Christian life. And, uh, and it's spectacular and, and, and love, love, love that, um, you know, that you've captured it. You've packaged this thing up. Again, just to, to reorient listeners, um, Nathaniel, you've been shooting film, short films, like, you know, two minutes, five minutes, eight, ten minutes, whatever, uh, film yep. that is, uh, you know, st from my, my recollection, sort of started off just capturing what God was doing on the streets when you were out on the yep. streets. You, you know, yep. you do function with a great grace of evangelists. Not only do you see pre-Christians come into a relationship with Jesus, but you actually have substantially prepared and trained the saints in the ministry of evangelism, and that is the function of evangelists. And so you've done that, you know, with online training courses, modules, and face-to-face, -face and 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 left in very much you know left the security of ministry that you and and Haley were involved in up in in Queensland and you know many people any listeners will know of Glory City Church and you guys are foundational in that space and and normal Christian life flourishing in that environment and then God says something different and you follow him and you're here on the central coast there's this ministry that as you, mm. you see again the, you 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 post a, a short clip, a video, a testimony of someone coming to faith in Jesus. When when someone shares Jesus on the street, when you post a video of someone who's walking with a limp in the street, and someone just lays hand on them, and then they're they're healed and they're walking well. And you post a video of you know a young child who's sick and and just like life threatening scenario, and and comes to life right before people's eyes. The videos that you post then are watched by millions 
like millions and millions of people. And I think you just gloss over it. But earlier in the, in the conversation, I think you said one of your videos on Facebook was 45 million views and over a million people sharing that to say, hey, watch what God is doing. Have a look at what's captured in this film. God is on the move. You know, this is remarkable stuff. And I don't know about most of the listeners probably have an idea, but um, the most Googled thing on earth anywhere in the world is YouTube, is YouTube. People go to YouTube ahead of every single other site on the planet. And you guys are on YouTube. In fact, I've been in your studio. And YouTube have given you a plaque. I mean, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> you guys are in the space where the world is and, and bring light and life into that space. That's, mm. that's, a, that's a great day. Um, the, the, um, the famous hymn, you know, that during COVID, when, uh, when the world was probably feeling fragmented, and probably feeling fearful, you go with a, a hymn that is known throughout the globe, Amazing Grace, yes. and and put together... I, where does this stuff come from? You put yeah. together an <laughs> idea that would have taken years to pull off, <laughs> and you do it in a week. Tell us about... It, it was, yeah, it was a few weeks. It was, it was absolutely... Uh, I, I still can't... To be honest, I still can't believe that that happened. It feels, it feels like you know those times in your life where where you just see God's grace and that's all you can see. You you know that you could not have even gotten an ounce of that done in your own strength, and that's what what that period of time was like. And and we all know it's. I think it's embedded into everyone's memory the formative experience of COVID insidiously creeping around the world at the mm. beginning, and and basically what that felt like and and i just knew god was calling me to and the normal christian life team to something quite significant in that period so early COVID 19 maybe it's been you know uh lockdowns have started for a couple of months at max and i just had this vision when i was talking with a guy about what would it look like to see this 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 mantra of the christian faith amazing grace sung by 50 different countries in, in many as many different languages and tribal tongues as possible singing the one song through lockdowns around the world in, in a celebratory type of way. And and I just I remember saying it to one of the most ambitious fathers in the faith I could possibly say is a German guy. And he, he said, is, is this possible, though? Yeah. And when he said, is this possible? I'm like, oh, man. Like if he's saying, is this possible? I think he's, he's like... <laughs> he I think was the one kind of, guy who knew it would be possible, and he's this, asking. This is the guy saying we're going to see a million people um, come to Christ through our, you know, through our organization this come year. On, and I tell him about on. this. He's like, "Is this possible, Nathaniel?" I'm like, "Oh man!" So I knew that if it was, you know, I knew if it was God, he'd make a way for it. And so, believe it or not, uh, fast forward three weeks later, and by the grace of God, we had managed to have f it, over. 50 different people from 50 different countries who are incredible singers with a backdrop of their landscapes. You know, I'm, 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 I'm even talking like Wuhan and Iran with their faces blurred out for obviously for, uh, say again, Afghanistan, it's like all these different yeah. countries. Yeah. You've got African countries, you've got, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, you even got New Zealand with Phil and the guys and a bunch of different places. We, we had indigenous Australians, um, who are some of the most profound Christians I know singing for Australia because we wanted to have the sound of of different uh, languages and and it is astonishing we even had a non-christian guy compose the soundtrack for us wow. and get deeply impacted as he's listening to all of this wow. uh you know just incredible you, and basically within three weeks we we're able to put this five minute film out where it starts off in in uh america right in new york with a with a guy with a mask on when it was absolutely locked down no one on the streets and it's just one guy standing in Times square empty and yeah. he starts singing this song amazing grace and it cuts over to wuhan it? it's not you see it. you see it's, a guy it's from an iconic China. shot nathaniel it's, it's an it's iconic profound. shot yeah and, and again yeah. we had no budget for all of this the church across the globe wow um uh, gave themselves to this vision and Christians, although I was literally talking to people who didn't speak English, who had translators <laughs> trying to help us back and forth. Um, and somehow 
and you guys are in technology with the radio. You know how in- ridiculous it is to have 50 people communicatively understand what you want them to do. Send you audio, send you a video separate in such a way that you can mix that into one, con- you know, one four minute video where it sweeps in with all these different languages back and forth, back and forth. And that you- you're just cutting every second, cutting to different uh, at-, at times, almost every second, cutting to different countries. And uh, it's... 50 different countries we managed to have and right at the end of this profound piece of music it culminates in the gospel shared in different languages to the climactic moment where they're all saying the name of jesus in their different languages and this is this profound call to action and we we put the video up and and obviously thank you to all the people all over the world who made this possible we we can't it wasn't it wasn't our efforts alone it was a huge effort by christians literally in almost every country you can think of and uh, a miracle happened within three weeks we put this video up online and it's it has had millions of views across the globe but the thing that excites me the most is it's had would you believe it well over just on youtube alone i believe last time i checked over five thousand different churches on youtube alone play that video during their services online so you can picture with each of them having hundreds of people on their services. It's just yeah. mind-blowing. Yeah. We've had reports of it being played in hospitals, uh, in, in funerals. The last request of someone, of several people, to play that video at their funeral. We've had it in um, wow. we've had it in um, jails, nice. in different, different jails asking us, can we play this video in jail cells? And it's just no the impact of it has just gone all over the globe. And if you're online and you want to – sorry, if you're listening on the radio and you want to uh, hear this incredible track, just type in 50 countries amazing grace on youtube it'll be the first thing that comes up and um i think it's over 3.6 million views on youtube at the moment and <laughs> just incredible incredible what what god is doing it mate the fact that you're in hospital beds prison cells uh you were in lake munmora's community whatsapp group i'm telling you because <laughs> Because literally it was like our neighbors are going to be blessed by hearing this. And so pre-Christians mm. and Christians are like just feedback of, oh, that really was a wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I mean, this thing was was a phenomenon. Now, yes, a lot of people contributed, but I think you were the only one who actually did three work, weeks without sleep, you know, working around <laughs> the clock to do it. S- super nice. <laughs> Grace. i tell you what, though, um, as a, I guess as a convenient segue, but... Uh, Phil was a, was a huge part of that job as well, and he was living in New Zealand at the time. And you can see there's this incredible shot with the with New Zealanders um, and Phil in the shot as well. And it was actually one of, I believe, probably the final straws in the process of Phil making the decision. And you were just saying earlier, Craig, that it, we probably glossed over it, but Phil, his wife, three kids made a faith decision just months ago to say we're moving to Australia. We don't know what this looks like. Uh, he's a full time very successful and talented editor and film producer of um, all kinds of content in New Zealand. I'm saying like really high quality stuff. And he left it all, left his successful business uh, to come here with no guarantee of, you know, actually being able to have the finances needed just on faith. And they moved to join the Normal Christian Life team. And Phil's been helping me full time to produce the content we have been talking about. So I know you asked some questions about Phil. Uh, I'm sure Phil wants to share a bit about his experience, but welcoming and introducing Phil to the Central Coast. Central Coast, this is Phil, Phil Burnett. (laughs) Welcome to Australia. We (laughs) hope you enjoy your time with us. You can't beat beat the weather here. (laughs) Hey, Phil, tell us about that, because this is a, a bold decision. You obviously... You, you know, you're obviously following Jesus, and uh, and we know that, like, the scriptures are clear. My sheep know my voice, right? We get to know the voice yeah. of God. We do know what it is to, to know the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But tell us, how does a conversation with you and your bride and, and your family, and obviously, by extension, the rest of your family, you're, you're born and bred New Zealander, or you, you are presuming, you know, siblings, parents, whatever, grandparents, all everyone over in Kiwi land and God speaks to you, how do those conversations go when you go, hey, it, it, the Lord's telling me i got to go? How, how does that go down? What's that like? Yeah, well, the Lord likes to speak to me in, through dreams and different words. And, and when, when you get saved, God has a plan for your life, God. And, um, and even in the early days, I feel like for everyone, God's got gifts that he's put, placed inside of you, and he's got a calling that 
um, he has for you. Amen. And um, and so for me, I was I was quite inspired and changed by online media. And so I definitely felt a calling that somehow, in some way, shape, or form, I think God wants to use me in 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 film and online media because I've been I've loved film since I was little. i um, always picked up a camera, and um, and so when I when I got saved, uh, I I felt a calling, and and God had given me um, different dreams, different things that he wanted me to do but with god he likes to show you the end goal but he doesn't show you how you're going to get there <laughs> and so i knew that maybe one day i'd be working with nathaniel potentially but i didn't know it would take six or seven years for something like that to come to pass mm. and so um mm. so there's there was a process of the lord working in me raising me up building not only uh different skills and talents in me i, I ended up starting a business with my family in new zealand and um and so, with with that business came a lot of skills on on how to actually use the camera, and um, so that that grew in me. And then one day, I felt like God wanted me to give it all up. And I was reading the Bible, and Jesus said, "Unless you give up everything, you cannot be my disciple." And I was like, "Well, what what does everything mean? Does that mean you know? Does that include your fridge? Is that does that, <laughs> does that include your car? Like what does?" Like so, I sat down with my wife, and I was like, "Let's just let's like let's just contextualize, and this is both of us just think, what does everything actually mean? You know, like because uh, I, f- I felt like if we don't give up everything now, when are we going to do that? When can mm. we say that I actually gave up everything? And so, um, th- before coming to Australia, we actually had made a bold decision like that." Um, a bold decision where we left everything. We actually went to Uganda for on a one-way ticket, and we sold everything in our house, and we went to um, just volunteer to ministry. But the Lord had put this um, kind of faith-based film in my heart, and it, it uh, all it, all that was was an obedience thing. I didn't know that mm. that Australia would be next, but because because God's like, if you can if you can be faithful with a little, you can be faithful with much. So. And we, we actually uh, left everything that one time, went to Uganda for five months before going back to New Zealand. And, um, you know, when, when we were faithful with that step, it wasn't actually as hard um, mm. because we had already given up everything to just do it again and come to Australia. And so... Um, yeah, and I'll just say as well, a shout out to, I don't know if Tashi is listening, but these guys have made this decision massively together. And, yeah. and so, you know, she's, and, and Haley, my wife, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without um, Tash and Haley. And so just a huge shout out, thank, you know, thanks so much to them. This yeah. is, this is you know, that, that amazing grace. That's Haley. that's Tash behind yeah. Phil as well. So sure. you know, they're, they're incredible. Yeah, because we, yeah, they, they take a big, um, they, they make the big sacrifice with us. But um, the thing that allows you to make decisions like that is one day, you know, we'll all stand before God and we'll give an account for our life. Mm. And, um, you know, there's 99 years on earth and 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 years in eternity. And, you know, you only have, um, you know, one life to, to do what you, you feel you're called to do with mm with the, the gifts and the callings God has placed on your life. And even even though the, there was COVID and lockdowns, I just thought, and, and my, my wife and I just, we prayed together and we just thought, you know, like we just, I don't want to look back when I'm 67 years old and be like, I should have done that. I should have just done it. And, and who, <laughs> who knows, like you, you never want to like miss out on the things God has um, yeah. placed on your life. We just, we just, we made the commitment and we came and, and God has really blessed it. And so you just have to be faithful and, and sometimes things take longer than you think it's going to go. And even sometimes you make mistakes along the way, but if you know where God is, um, if, if God's given you the end, you just got to do your best to walk towards obedience and whatever he's said for your life. And, mm. and, um, sometimes it's, it's not straightforward, but you just make one step at a time and you look back and then think, wow, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Phil. You've given him your yes, and that yes echoes throughout eternity. 
And I, mm. mate, wisdom on those shoulders. We're, absolutely, you know, like if if we don't step now, like uh, you know, there's going to be stuff that conspires and and stuff that'll try and derail, and the vision will get hazier and whatever. But the step with the yes. At the moment when he's you know painting the picture, Eben, you 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 took a yes, you you jumped from the U.S. to to Oz. That's a really big jump, you know. Um, mm. And and when you when you when you're taking those steps, I mean, obviously, I, I suppose too, you want we we all want a life of significance. We want to see that our life's made a difference, that it's counted. And when you when you have a ministry that's um, that's seeing the impact in millions and millions of lives, measurably millions of lives, like a normal Christian life, it's like, well, you know, I'd like I'd like to hitch my trailer to that thing. I'd like to run with that thing. It's a you know, God's on that because you know the story of the kingdom is being told across the globe and you, you know you guys um you don't you can't oversell this thing because it's literally gone across the globe and millions and millions you know yeah well done okay. let's cut to a song before we actually um before we actually uh, uh come back and pick up where we're going to pick up because that was an interesting segment there uh and people need to actually dissect that um people need to yeah. consider their yes yes yeah 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 because yeah. Yeah. what phil just said there is something that a lot of people are afraid to take yeah you know they, 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 they're they're yeah. they're i mean they hear that voice of god and he, he's asking to step out and do something and it's not like changing you know the restaurants you've been through or changing chefs this is a big life moment and you know it, you you want to hear correctly because it could end disastrously wrong. So you know, hopefully people who are hearing that call of God um, on their life and not exactly sure what to do about that will you know uh, take a moment. Testimony from Phil there that was just amazing. And uh, we were talking off air, and he said something uh, in that in that in that chit chat about him being. Uh, spoken to by a random stranger in McDonald's that someday he'd work with Nathaniel and then lo and behold, boom, there it was. But he said it took six or seven years. I thought it was like six or so months, but apparently no, it was six or seven years. They didn't actually know each other. And uh, I think they, they've only known each other now for two years. Um, but I thought that was absolutely interesting when that <laughs> when he popped into that. But anywho, um, our, our guest today is Nathaniel Oliveri and his, uh, his newest member member of his team phil and uh it's been interesting to see how that has flourished uh we're having some technical di difficulties here as you can hear me just waffling on here i can see the problem here sir stevens we have dropped the net there is no net here yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, they you know, can't they can't come back in that's what the issue is yes but you know what we, we've been talking to nathaniel from normal christian life um i've i've introduced this ministry to the central coast you know some years back and nathaniel's been in the studio a number of times uh he's uh he's in, initially he was a guest kind of traveling down from from uh, Queensland and a um, member of the Glory City Church up there and uh, has just such a great functional grace as an evangelist. He um, He's uh, developed some online evangelism training, which uh, you, know, you can access as well. It's called um, Silence Busters. Um, if you jump on the internet and search Silence Busters, it really unpacks or it, it goes after some of the the myth and the lie of the enemy that that has essentially kept Christians from sharing Jesus with people. If you're somebody who is walking with Jesus and and could probably go, look, in the last week or so, I haven't necessarily shared Jesus with pre-Christians. Uh, then th this kind of course, this kind of resource, is going to be very beneficial. It's called Silence Busters or Silence Breakers, sorry, and uh, and it, it's it's going to uh, be a use because it'll it'll release you to. Um, um, to confidently share Jesus in a context with pre-Christians. Um, so Nathaniel, again, has developed that. It's a brilliant, brilliant course, uh, and it's available uh, to anybody online. But normalchristianlife.org is their website, and um, on the website they've got a whole bunch of videos, and they use the... the um, they, they use the uh, the platform, if you like, a video to tell, or the media video to tell the stories of what Jesus is doing. And, and you know, I said before, it started off with, um, you know, telling the stories of pre-Christians um, coming to faith in Christ because Nathaniel was out on the street witnessing. 
um, and uh, and and you catch that on on video, and it's like, oh wow, I just saw the moment when uh, when someone came to faith in Christ. But they uh, quite frequently have been telling the mystery stories of of um, the healing work of the Holy Spirit out in the street, in the neighbourhoods, um, you know, wherever they've been as well. It's just two minute videos um, captured and. Uh, um, uh, you, you know, telling those kinds of stories as well. Um, it, it's it's a, it's a great thing um, that that uh, that the medium will actually allow for 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 capturing that. But there's been a couple of other um, uh, films that they've worked on as well. Um, one of the ones which we had introduced uh, last time they were in the studio was Doctor George Miracle Man, and, and that's the story. They, they, they're building a. A, a, I think it's a, a little over an hour long um, film um, of of a, 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 a emergency physician in Western Australia. I think it's Kalgoorlie Hospital who um, has had a, a medical emergency, a cardiac arrest, and physically has died. And uh, um, and they uh, the work on him, the medical emergency team come and and work on him and. Uh, um, have managed to to bring out uh you know a a great um intervention with with his his life his wife who's also a practicing christian and physician at the hospital says keep working on him until i get to the hospital she arrives at the hospital she just grabs hold of his hand and she basically has faith to believe god to restore him and heal him now this is after uh, um, the details i'm not 100 percent sure but it was like after the best part of an hour of working on someone who was clinically dead um you know which is not compatible with life i done my time in critical care spaces and uh, and essentially that's that's not something that medical scenarios kind of play out very well on so after the best part of an hour working on this man, all of a sudden they've got a heartbeat back. But as Nathaniel and the medical team tell the story, everyone's heart sinks. Because if you haven't got somebody, um, you know, with a heartbeat back after a short period of time, then if they are going to survive, it's not going to be that they're going to survive to any real quality of life. And so um, so that's that's been the, the story that Dr. George has uh, come back to life, but everyone's kind of real anxious that he's probably not going to survive that real well. And essentially, um, the the normal Christian life guys are telling the story of a, of a phenomenal miracle where Dr. George not only comes back to life, but after a, a short period of time, is all of a sudden um, up and reading his own medical files, his own medical charts, and and managing his own medical care. He's he's been one hundred percent restored back to full health. Um, that's the big miracle story, you guys. Uh, the normal Christian life, Nathaniel and Phil, you've been working on. Um, that's the long game, the big cinema film type thing. Um, and uh, and some of our listeners had heard that before, had heard some of that that context. I think we've got the guys back on the line yes, now. Yes, yes. Um, you, you can breathe now. Oh, I can breathe. Glory Very to God. <laughs> you um, can breathe now. But that I'm wondering awesome. if you can just give us a quick update as to where that yeah. film's up to, Dr. George Medical Man. Well, Miracle we could, Man. yeah, we could hear, we could hear your, uh, we could hear your synopsis. Great job. It's a, it's a powerful film. We actually, just before COVID-19, we were able to, to interview, I think it was over 10 medical professionals in Perth uh, and Western Australia just before COVID-19. How great's that timing? And um, we literally have, uh, you know, uh, professors of medicine and like everyone in, in the industry who is, you know, high and some of the, the you know, in uh, Perth hospital the main hospital there and we're interviewing these guys from all different worldviews and they're telling us this is a medical miracle that cannot be explained uh, with science and just an incredible story and dr sean george of course uh and ended up uh leaving the hospital within just a couple of weeks and as he left they called him miracle man miracle man has left the building there was atheists calling him miracle man and it's a profound <laughs> medical miracle and we are now we have been working on this for some time because it as you said it is we do a lot of short scale 10 to 15 minute uh, projects that that go around the world this is where we're heading we have just finished a draft of the script 
because it's a lot of work that goes into this. We want to tell stories well, and when stories are told well, they're deeply impactful. We don't want to just throw a bunch of things on screen and hope it works okay. So we're uh, we're de- early in the process, really, because there's a whole lot to do. And part of getting to the you know to this uh, release of a feature is the um, the process of our short episodes, and that coming full circle brings us back to the story we're currently working on about a girl named Kim who passed away in a car crash. She wrote a blog two weeks before she passed away and what it said uh, was a conversation between her and God and basically welcoming her to heaven. This was written just a couple of weeks before she died in a freak car crash and an invitation to everybody. Uh, and this got read out at her funeral and has gone viral all across the world. That's our next episode. It's a short story. Uh, documentary that we will be releasing in the next few months on the normal Christian life. Uh, if you've been impacted by these stories, you can you can go normalchristianlife.org and you can join the emailing list. You'll see everything about what we're doing. And if you're on the central coast uh, or anywhere around this region, you know this is us. This is coming from here. We're reaching millions of people for Jesus, and you're a part of this. You know what? And, and the invitation is very clear to be a part of this. So the body of Christ, different churches, friends of yours are, and, you know, ours are in the region. To We just want to get behind this and to cheer mm. this on because Amen. this is the medium that is impacting the world the most. And you guys are in it up to your eyeballs telling the miracle stories. Um, where was the car accident where this girl um, passed away tragically? It happened in Darwin. In Darwin, yeah, yeah, so it was up in Oz, um, and uh, you guys, are ca- tell me, a good friend of ours, um, Pastor Craig Corkle, been on our program a number of times before at Narara Valley Baptist Church, at least until this week, um, when, yep. <laughs> when the big transition happens, <laughs> but um, he, he said, yeah, come on in, turn my church into a hospital ward, what happened there? Yeah, well, I guess in 20 seconds, it was uh, an incredible experience, the whole church gathered together for us, and we basically turned the hallway and a creche room into a full-on hospital set to tell an integral part of this story. And I had medical professionals say, this looks just like a hospital set. Many miracles that took place right here in the Central Coast. But oh, it's an incredible story, amazing story. And you can find out more, normalchristianlife.org, the normalchristianlife.org. But so, so thank you to everyone in the Central Coast for your help with this project. And we believe it is going to reach countless millions of people with hope in a time where many people are feeling hopeless so thanks so much for being a part of this i don't even know if that's a faith statement nathaniel we believe this is going to reach millions of course it's going to reach millions because everything you guys do reaches millions no i'm going to believe for it to reach billions in jesus name. <laughs> let's break the internet with this stuff amen oh my goodness thanks guys appreciate you and uh, thanks for joining us on, you know, Christians and Cars. It's been an episode. <laughs> it's been beautiful. Excellent. Uh, new Expressions. We'll see you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.